300 million people, 300 million people worldwide suffer from type 1 diabetes. This is something we know doesn't have a cure. It has some treatments, but unfortunately these treatments are very limited. They don't work very well. They don't last for very long. And it is fairly expensive. And so not many people do get the treatment that they need. But there is hope. Recently, an experiment led by Doug Malkin, a man who has two children with type 1 diabetes, has made a breakthrough in this research. And that's what I will be talking about. My name is Liliana Rodriguez, and I will explain to you how exactly they did this and what their findings were. So we all know this type 1 diabetes is, ca is caused by the autoimmune destruction of pancreatic islet cells. And the purpose of this experiment was to see if they could develop a cell that would look and act the same way as a working pancreatic cell would. And um, previous research, as you can see here, they got up only to here. They weren't able to create a functioning plant beta cell, which is the, the, the pancreatic cell. They weren't able to make a functioning the other efforts were very good. They got it to almost the right place, but there was always some flaws. They wouldn't secrete insulin. They would be um, underdeveloped. They wouldn't express the right markers that would tell them that it's a beta cell, or there were other abnormalities that developed. Now, what this group did differently they took this same study that was already done and went off of this end that they, that they couldn't do. They took this another step further. And they did that, um, as you can see on this next slide here, they did that by using tissue culture flasks, using embryonic stem cells. And they started off with the previous method. But when they got to that, that point, where they, they just stopped, they added in some other things that other people did. And this was, of course, just um, guesses. Um, and they differentiated the cell to go in a different direction until they saw something that resembled a pancreatic cell. Now, how they tested um, if the cell was actually functional or, functional or not was that they used something called an ELISA test. Now this test was used to see the amount of insulin that was being secreted, if at all, from this cell. Now if this cell proved to be functional, they would then take it in vivo and transplant them into a mouse, which is exactly what they did. They, they transplanted these newfound cells diabetic mice and again did the ELISA test to see the results. In this next slide here, you can see the findings of the first in vitro um, experiment. Now there are two control groups here as well as a test group. So the first control are the cells from the previous efforts to make a beta cell. And we know those don't work. These are non-functioning beta cells. The next section is from a human pancreas, working pancreatic cells. So we know for sure that these are normal and they work. And these are the ones that were developed by this group led by, led by Doug Malkin. And on this, on the graph here, we 
we see that we are measuring in units of insulin per centimeter of cells. And on the bottom here, we see the units of glucose that, that we're using. And this is in vitro. This is not in a live animal or a live person. Now, as you can see, the pattern with the insulin secretion is very similar, very similar to the ones of the working human beings. Now, the reason that they differentiated the amount of glucose was to see the reactiveness of the beta cells to the glucose. And this is to make sure that the cells aren't just going to turn on when they send glucose or they're not just going to turn on suddenly. Because if we try to do this in humans, this would be very bad for humans. On this next slide, this is the when they did the in vivo test with the mice, we see the same thing again. We see the two control groups and then the one test group. And this is being measured by the, the insulin as well. But um, instead of glucose, they're, they're me measured in uh, the mouse number. And these two different colored bars mean two different things. So the white ones mean zero minutes. So that's like right when they need the, the glucose. And then the black bar is the measurement that they took so that in between, that is the measurement that they were that they were looking for. And as you can see again, although it's a little bit different, the the human pancreatic cells are reacting very similarly to the ones of that they were developed. And then as you can see, the, the control group of the beta cells is not the predominant one. And so what are the implications? What are the implications of this experiment? Well, a good one is that this group, led by Doug Nelson, have paved the way towards a cure, a very, at least a very good treatment for people that are suffering from type 1 diabetes. This is something that we are, we can, in the future, take to clinical trials and see if they will work in human subjects after further development. Maybe one of the not so great implications is that these studies use embryonic stem cells. Now this is something that is controversial because for those of you that don't know, embryonic stem cells are actually harvested from human embryos. And this is something that not everyone but this is also something that we have to decide for ourselves. Are, are we going to continue research and try to serve these 300 million people that are suffering? Or do we not do it? To avoid not, not killing someone, but harvesting these embryonic stem cells from one person. It's something that decide which is more important and it is a very hard decision but as you can see research like this is necessary for us to find cures to the diseases that we want to bring about and I hope this this has sparked interest in stem cell research if not that is important. Does anyone have any questions? How long was this? Nine minutes? Okay, that's not bad.